Close your eyes for a moment. Then open them slowly. Look around you. What do you see? Colors? Shapes? Details so sharp it's hard to believe they're real. But here's the unsettling truth. Your eyes lie to you. Or maybe they just show you what they can. We think our vision is crystal clear, like an 8K camera feeding reality directly into our brain. But it's not. Your eyes are more like two biological scanners, constantly stitching blurry snapshots together, filling in the blanks with guesses. So the question is, how sharp is our vision really? If we compared it to a camera, how many megapixels would the human eye have? 20, 100, 1,000? This isn't just a question of biology. It's a question of perception, of limits, of how the brain bends reality to make you think you're seeing everything when you're not. Let's dive deep into the retina, into the neurons, into the architecture of your mind, and find the answer. But beware, what you'll discover might just make you doubt every single thing you've ever seen. Let's get scientific. The human eye is a remarkable structure, about 2.5 centimeters wide, weighing only 7 grams. Yet, it houses over 120 million rod cells and 6 million cone cells packed into the retina. That sounds like a massive number. But here's the twist. Most of these photoreceptors don't see in high detail. Only a tiny region, called the fovea, is responsible for sharp central vision. It's just 1.5 millimeters in diameter, less than a grain of rice. And this is where nearly all your HD vision comes from. Outside of the fovea, everything gets blurry. So blurry that if you could freeze your eyes input, the world would look like a dream out of focus. But your brain, ever the trickster, moves your eyes in tiny, rapid bursts called saccades, stitching all those blurry regions together in real time. It fills in the blanks, creates the illusion. That's right, you're not seeing the world clearly. You're seeing what your brain wants you to see. It's like an ultra-sophisticated hallucination, powered by biology. So, if we had to translate this biological marvel into numbers, what exactly is the resolution of the human eye? You might have heard claims like, 576 megapixels floating around online. But here's the truth, it's complicated. That number comes from trying to calculate the total number of distinguishable points your fovea can process when your eye scans a scene. But the eye doesn't work like a camera. Cameras capture full images at once. Your eyes scan the world piece by piece. If you stare straight ahead, the fovea captures a razor sharp one, two degrees of your field of view in incredible detail. The rest? It's low res, but your brain cleverly updates this image in real time as your eyes dart around. Imagine a 576 megapixel mosaic constantly being refreshed, one tiny piece at a time. You never actually see all 576 megapixels at once. It's like trying to watch a high resolution movie, but only through a straw, and your brain edits it into a cinematic masterpiece before you even notice. The question is, if your brain can fool you so perfectly, how much of what you see is actually real? Reality, it seems, is negotiable. Because the eye doesn't just see, it interprets. Think about it. There's no color in the outside world. No red, no blue, no green. There are only different wavelengths of light, bouncing off objects and entering your eye. Color is a construct. Your brain looks at light frequencies and assigns a color to them, based on past experience and context. That red apple, it's only red because your brain agrees to call 700 nanometers of light red. And here's where it gets even weirder. If we change the lighting, your brain still sees the apple as red, even if the light bouncing off it has completely changed. This phenomenon is called color constancy. Your brain cheats to maintain stability. It's doing calculations in the background, comparing shadows, brightness, and surrounding colors, just to make sense of the chaos. In other words, you're not seeing the world as it is. You're seeing what your brain thinks it should be. A curated experience. A simulation made of memories, light, and guesses. Now, let's take this one step further. What if I told you that the resolution of your eye, as impressive as it is, is just the beginning of a deeper illusion? Your vision, this incredible tool that seems so precise and real, is being filtered by your brain in ways you can't even imagine. Your eyes take in all this data, but it's the brain that decides what's important. You see, your mind isn't a passive observer, it's an editor, cutting away the unnecessary details and constructing a narrative. Ever notice how, when you're driving, you suddenly remember 
that you didn't consciously pay attention to the stop sign, but you know you stopped? That's your brain filling in the gaps. It uses something called subliminal perception, processing tiny clues that your conscious mind misses. It's filtering out irrelevant information to make the world seem smoother, more coherent, and safer. But that doesn't mean it's actually showing you everything. In fact, it's actively hiding vast amounts of the world around you. The blind spots? Your brain makes sure you don't even notice them. It's a full-on illusion. Your mind is playing tricks on you, crafting a version of reality that feels natural, but it's incomplete. The question is, what's hidden from view? And more importantly, why are we so blind to it? And it doesn't stop there. Think about this. Your brain's entire operation, its way of interpreting the world, relies on shortcuts. It's essentially running a high-speed simulation, constantly predicting the future and filling in the blanks. Every time you look at something, your brain isn't just processing what's in front of you. It's predicting what should be there. You might think you're seeing the world as it is, but you're actually seeing the world as your brain expects it to be. This explains why optical illusions work. Your brain's best guess, its prediction, gets tricked by the environment. It's like playing a video game where the system tries to load the next frame before it's actually been created. You see the illusion because your mind's prediction doesn't match the reality in front of you. But what if this simulation is more complex than we realize? What if the way we think we see the world is actually the result of a thousand decisions made behind the scenes? This is where things get unsettling. What if, just like the colors we see, the very objects around us aren't as solid as we think? What if, in the end, our perception is just a delicate web of predictions, filtered through biases, past experiences, and the brain's attempt to make sense of an overwhelmingly chaotic world? At this point, we have to ask, what is reality really? Is it simply the sum of what we perceive with our senses? Or is there more lurking just beyond our understanding, hidden beneath the layers of perception we take for granted? Our senses are imperfect, designed to interpret only a fraction of the vast spectrum of information the universe offers. Imagine a dog's sense of smell, or the ultra-sensitive hearing of a bat. These creatures experience the world in ways so fundamentally different from us, they might as well live on entirely separate planets. The same goes for humans. Our eyes can only pick up a narrow slice of the electromagnetic spectrum. What if there are things around us, undetectable to our senses, that we just can't grasp? Could there be hidden dimensions of reality that we're blind to? You've probably heard of quantum physics, where particles exist in multiple states at once, defying all common sense. What if our perception of solid objects is just as illusory? In fact, the very idea of an object being solid is an oversimplification. At the atomic level, everything is a blur of vibrating particles, most of which is empty space. What you think of as solid, tangible reality is in fact just a series of ever-changing energy fields, interacting in ways too subtle for us to notice. It begs the question, how much of the world is truly real? And how much of it is simply a series of tricks played on our senses by a brain trying to make sense of the chaos? But this idea of perception being a mere construct leads us to something even more profound. What if the reality you're experiencing right now isn't just an illusion, but a shared one? Think about it. Every single human being on this planet is walking around in a different, personal version of the world, shaped by their senses, biases, and life experiences. Yet, somehow, we all manage to agree on what's real. We can communicate, we can build societies, and we can work together towards common goals. But how is it that, despite living in our own subjective versions of the world, we share this same reality. The answer might lie in the idea that our brains don't just passively receive information. They actively create the world we experience. Our brains use sensory input like raw ingredients and mix them with memory, past experiences and predictions to generate a mental map of the world. This map is so convincing that we often mistake it for the actual world itself. But here's the kicker. Your brain's map is not the same as anyone else's. Your version of reality is uniquely yours, shaped by your personal history, your culture, and even your mood. The result? We live in parallel worlds, connected by a shared understanding of what's real, but fundamentally isolated in our own perceptions. If everyone's reality is being created by their brain, how much can we trust our senses? What if we're all just wandering around in a shared, collective hallucination? Now, let's stretch this idea even further. 
What if everything we know about the world, the objects we touch, the people we interact with, the experiences that define our lives, are all just interpretations filtered through a biological lens? We think we see the world clearly, but what if everything is just a construct created by our minds to help us navigate an incredibly complex environment? Consider this. The colors we perceive, the objects we touch, even the sounds we hear, they don't exist outside of our perception of them. They're merely electrical signals traveling through our nervous system, interpreted by our brain. When you look at the sky, what you're really seeing is not the sky itself, but your brain's interpretation of electromagnetic waves. The same goes for every other sense you rely on. The world, as we know it, only exists in our minds. This is a humbling realization. What if the reality you experience isn't the real reality at all? What if it's a distortion, shaped by the unique wiring of your brain and the way it processes the data it receives? And what if you're not even aware of it? This makes us ask the deeper question. How can we be sure of anything? How do we know that what you're seeing is even close to the truth? The brain's interpretation is limited by its own hardware and software, shaped by evolution to make sense of the world as quickly and efficiently as possible. But that doesn't mean it's providing us with an accurate representation. In fact, your brain could be lying to you, constantly filtering and altering reality to fit a set of assumptions that help you survive. If that's the case, how can we trust what we see, hear, or feel? In the end, perhaps the most profound question is this. If reality is something that is constantly filtered and constructed by our minds, then can we ever truly know what the world is like, independent of our perceptions? If reality is just a product of sensory data, mental shortcuts, and past experiences, how do we know we're seeing the world as it really is? Are we all, in fact, living in different realities, each of us trapped in our own personal version of the universe, never truly experiencing the world as it exists outside our minds? It's easy to get lost in these questions, to spiral into doubt and uncertainty. But maybe the real answer lies in accepting that there are limits to what we can perceive and understand. Maybe reality is not something to be known in the way we typically think, but something to be experienced, interpreted, and understood in pieces. Perhaps the greatest truth is not in trying to prove what's real, but in embracing the mystery and complexity of existence itself. And in doing so, we might find that reality, in all its intricate and elusive forms, is more amazing and awe-inspiring than we ever could have imagined. So, now whenever you look around at the world, at the people, the objects, the experiences you encounter, ask yourself, how much of this is truly real? And how much of it is just a beautiful, intricate construction of your mind, shaping the universe to fit your understanding? Maybe the most important thing isn't to seek out the absolute truth, but to marvel at the fact that we're even able to question it at all.